Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Lost in Criterion. I'm John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and with me, as always, is a man who wears a bath towel to work every day. That's I your am cue, the Adam. Adam Glass. I know. I, t- I was. I was. T- I took my cue. It's the. It's the. It's the internet lag. It's gotta be. <laughs> it's all right. There's always a little bit of silence, and that's fine. Special guest today, uh, soon to be former roommate of mine and former contributor to IO9, Stephen. Hi, is back with us. Hi, Stephen. Thanks for having me. You're soon you're to be welcome. former roommate. Yeah, yeah Stephen told me now. that. I'm sorry, Aww. we had to say. So that. he won't be on the podcast anymore. Well, I'm sure he can still be around. As, uh, as it turns out, no, I know this he is can't sort of, be on the podcast anymore. <laughs> this is sort Adam. of how the sausage is made. But uh, Adam and I are not in the same room. Uh, even right yeah. now while recording. So. Yeah, so uh, it'll You're be okay. blowing my, my illusions. It's, <laughs> I can't handle it. I need to go sit, to live sit down. It'll, it'll be okay. He can, he, can, he can come visit again. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, it would actually have no effect on the system at all. <laughs> no, it won't. It won't. Pat, <laughs> Except for you can't you go wake realized, him up. In case you haven't realized, you live in Japan. No, we are in the same we room, don't... <laughs> Adam. God damn it. Three of us are sitting around a fire oh. drinking fine cognac. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks, Pat. Now I'm going to have to click the explicit tag on this one. I already clicked the explicit <laughs> tag for the entire podcast, Adam. They're all okay. labeled explicit. Well, then, I guess because you we invi- because, because we invited to. Donovan on the show one time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we need Donovan back sometime. Anyway. <laughs> no, we should. He's a great guest. This episode, we're going to be talking about the uh, 1932 adaptation of uh, the... Uh, Richard Connell short story, The Most Dangerous Game. Uh, this one directed by Irving Pichel and Ernest B. Shodzak, which is a name I'm sure I just said wrong. No, it's um, fine. We're already we're by, over the fact that we've pronounced them all wrong. <laughs> uh, it's produced by Marion C. Cooper and Shodzak, uh, who it is good to know uh, would re- rejoin each other, I suppose, along with a lot of the cast, including uh, our main characters. And... Uh, most of the uh, of the set pieces uh, a couple years later to record King Kong. No way! What? <laughs> that was authentic, right? What? <laughs> that was totally authentic. I, 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 you know, this is what a, a, a thing I do a lot on my Twitter is to not make a joke and then explain the joke that I didn't make. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I, I told Pat that just prior, and he wanted to pretend to be surprised, and then he did a terrible job pretending to be No, surprised. we did great, Stephen. We did great. I think I think we're as as good actors as maybe our <laughs> Anybody lead, in this lead film. antagonist yeah. in this film. Our, our, yes. Um, <laughs> Man, the lead antagonist the in this worst. film. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Um, He's the Sylvester Stallone of his day. Joel McCree is is his name and he is the worst actor in the, in the history of bad guy. I mean he's Ray, actually he's more like the Arnold Schwarzenegger of his day I guess. I was going to say he's, he's more like the John Lovitz of his day, you know. Yeah, I can, you know what? Acting. He's, he's, <laughs> yeah, he okay, really you're is. right. You win. It's a very <laughs> that's true. It's a very classic sort of stage American acting thing, yeah. but uh it doesn't work here at all. Well, uh and there's a reason we don't use that sort of acting accent yeah. anymore. I mean, you know, as a, as a probably a basic plot recap, um, I'm sure most people know the story of, of the most dangerous game. Um, well, it's been a, adapted so many times in so many different ways. My favorite, the past, Including our English John one. Leguizamo. Nice. Is never that, saw yeah, that anyway. really? you, I've never yes. seen it either. I believe you. <laughs> no, it, it really is. My, and it's a terrible movie. My, my favorite is a, a, a subquest in the game Oblivion. Uh, <laughs> or you're lured to a small island, and uh, a rich baron hunts for sport all the people he's lured to the island, which is right. you know the plot of this which movie. Yes. <laughs> well, you should be allowed to play as the baron if it's a blue oh year. god, <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Mm. Just that one. Um, yeah, um, so that that's that the the guy we're making fun of is is the baron in this. He's the the count of I don't even remember his name, but. He's yeah, Russian Zaroff. Count Zaroff. 
Yeah. Yes. It's a good name. Just Who, also uh, doing atrocious acting. Right. I don't I don't know if it, it if it popped up in the movie. I can't remember, but in the short story he is explicitly uh having left Russia after the uh revolution. It's uh, pretty obvious in this as well. He's in fact I think well, he I mean, says it. I yeah, he I says I left after the revolution. Point. After those yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, he even uses some sort of derogatory, makes some sort of derogatory comment about the uh, revolution. I'm sure oh, really? Knows. This guy has disrespect for human life. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, know, but right. like, but like, it's almost as if for a few minutes they decided to make the movie a commentary on the revolution. I see. Of it was weird. Like to. there was like about a minute where it was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. I then, I, uh, oh, I did not. If this movie were any more racist against Russians, I <laughs> right. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it, it, it would, it, I don't even think it's possible. Those poor, like, just every single person who's on the island is not the three big characters. All those, all those Cossacks. These hulking mounds of idiot Russian. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't don't, really don't tell. Don't mind him, he's dumb. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't really tell if um, they were actually speaking Russian when they were quote-unquote no, speaking Russian. And well, I would be curious. Zaroff is, <laughs> yeah, well, Zaroff's like, is played by a guy named Leslie Banks, so I'm going with him not being Russian. Right. Yeah, I just, yeah. you know, it's I don't, I don't at want to the be very racist least, myself, but... Well, right. It, it's at the very um, least bad Russian, but I don't know if it's actual Russian. It might just be, like, you know, collateral <laughs> no, it's, growling it's, noises. I don't know. Yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the equivalent of a Durka Durka Durka. Exactly. Like, it may yeah, as well the, be. The 19, I mean, <laughs> 1924 version. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it wasn't real Russian. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know because I don't speak a whole lot of Russian. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, just not a whole lot. I mean, you know, you can get by, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I know how to ask where the bathroom is, and uh, please don't kill me. Um, wow. Yeah, the the essentials. <laughs> the essentials. Adam accidentally just confessed he used to work for a spy agency. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. please don't kill me. It's one of the only phrases you know in Russian. <laughs> I wasn't a very good spy. I have but. information. <laughs> I'll give you all you want to know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I learned enough Russian to be a turncoat. Right, okay? right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, really... that's the thing. I couldn't really I tell if this movie had like political ambitions or, or ideas. What well, does the book? I don't or the short story. I don't remember. We read it, and then I don't remember the detail. I remember the the plot because everybody knows the plot of Most Dangerous Game. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But like, I don't. It's remember a, it's a any cultural consciousness. So, yeah. which is weird, right? It's so, weird that this is a culture con- uh, cultural consciousness thing, like a zeitgeist yeah. thing. I think it, yeah. it probably has a lot to do with, like, people think the rich can get away with anything, right? Like, yeah. even well, apparently they can. Well, I just watched this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite anything. You need that, you need that uh, rugged American to put an end to it. Right, it's not really clear, because the rugged American is rich, too. So I don't know if this is even tapping into this. Everybody yeah. in this movie is a, is a rich <clears throat> jerk. Everyone yeah. in this movie is a rich so jerk. So I don't think this is even well, I mean, tapping except into for the Yeah. Well, right, yeah, except for those, those dumb, mute Cossacks. <laughs> yeah, yes. right. But, like, I'm so confused, because, like... Like... Then we hear them talking, so I guess only the one was dumb. I guess, yeah. Well, in, he calls in the him... traditional sense of that of that phrase, not in the yeah, right. If you think of that one as like, can the... we just start calling him uh, like, like what do you what do you use for dumb? I, I'm so confused. I, I think we can still use dumb um, because he's he doesn't he's he doesn't vocalize. But he can speak non vocal yeah, non vocal. Hmm. That's, that's there there's a lot of like really small little inconsistencies in the script like that. Like he refers to the guy as dumb, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, everybody's he talks. talking. Later. He talks yeah. almost immediately. <clears throat> so maybe he's d- dumb in the sense that we mean dumb. Like maybe. he's just not. Maybe. He's just an idiot. He's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's all he's meaning. Who knows? You know, and then and then you know he's always insistent. Zaroff is always insistent that his uh, his game uh, takes place. You know, over the course of. Midnight to sunrise, six hours, but after the guy has a one, a full day to escape, and obviously he didn't give that to uh, Eve's brother Raymond or whatever. Is it Raymond? I think well, he, he he implies that he didn't deserve it somehow, right? Because he was yeah. a drunken buffoon or whatever. But yeah, like that's but he, like saying like I only that's like only if it's going to be it's interesting. Like, that's a confusing saying. It's like I I only hunt 
animals for food except for when they're assholes. Mm-hmm. And then I and I just do it because they deserve it. Like I don't yes. understand like how you break your own rules like that. It's really weird. Yeah. Right. And I then, mean this, and then he, this movie would have to take like that guy would have to take his rules a lot more seriously for this movie to actually have anything to say about hunting, yeah. about politics, about class. Uh, but it, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't the movie doesn't take those rules and the way this guy makes his decisions seriously enough. I mean if it's Right, if he's it like I only hunt be, with this bow yeah. and then he goes and gets his high powered rifle because he loses one. And time. then a pack of yeah. dogs. Yeah. I mean that he just yeah. he brings yeah, out the whole pack yes. of dogs to do his dirty work for him. So Right, yeah. it's like when did this is it even basically stop being hunting at this point? It's like it stopped being we a, need to eliminate the the pest on right. our land. It stopped being a, a contest of brains, right? The way that if this were a philosophically interesting movie about maybe like Nietzschean philosophy or something it would be a contest of the wills of these two people but instead it yeah. just becomes hey bring out the dogs to eat this guy I'm tired of him you know yeah right like I'm gonna chase him up a tree and then shoot him like a fox yeah yeah the short, the short story does a little bit better but he, but even still the escalation is there <clears throat> in the short story first off he's got three days mm-hmm. it's not just six hours he has a full day's head start and it's midnight to midnight actually he doesn't have a full day's head start he only has a three hour head start and it's midnight to midnight for three days I see. um which which makes it a little more interesting just on a thing on a on a combative level mm-hmm. eve's character is completely made up for this and it's obvious considering Fay ray is just fan service in this entire movie um right but uh but yeah, in the in the original short story, uh, the escalation is always in response to "Oh, I underestimated you. You're a lot better than I thought you were." Um, except which, for the first I one. guess, if you want it to be a commentary on the rules that people make up for themselves mm-hmm. being bullshit, yeah, it kind of that that in the short story kind of makes sense. It's yeah. like yeah. okay, so he says he does all these things, but then he'll escalate it as soon as he starts to lose because he doesn't want to lose. He yeah. doesn't care about the sport. He cares about not losing. Right. Yeah, uh, and it makes. I guess if you take that and apply that logic to this, it makes sense. But because of the short time, where because of the the length of the movie combined with the length of the time spoken, yeah, like what they it, it does. It's like man, this guy jumps to like escalates things. This they escalates quickly. Yeah, the escalation right. makes more sense if oh he lasted one day. Let me let me do something more intent. Oh, he lasted two days. Let me do something. Let me bring out the dogs. Yeah. Right. You know. Um, and he's also, it also makes the traps make more sense too, because he like has a, right. has like, time to, he like has time to a dig a punji pit. Butt. He like has Amazing. time to dig a punji pit instead of just sticking a piece of bamboo in the ground and it magically killing Ivan. I know that guy, that was, <laughs> maybe those Cossacks just really are dumb. <laughs> maybe. He just maybe. runs into that thing and then yeah. like it kills him. It's like one stick and it hits one guy. What are the odds of that? It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Also, like, you know, um, what what are the odds that of all the angles of approach that, that uh, the, the Count could have made um, to 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 um, uh, this guy while he's hiding out include, like, where the traps are, right? Like, he, like, yeah. like, like the Count always goes in the way that, that the... I forget the guy's name. Right, and we, have no, we have no Rainsford. Pass. Bob Rainsford. Yeah, Rainsford. Yeah. Name here. It's always... It not Bob the Count always does story. exactly what Rainsford expects him to do, right? Like, it's yes. like set up and then close call and then retaliation by the Count. And that's the same the same thing for, like, the dropping log and for the, the pit with the leaves over it. It's set up, close call by the Count, and then retaliation by the Count. That's it. Yeah, yeah and we don't Simple. see paths or anything that would indicate he would no. be following them. He just happens to stumble upon, like, the one trap yeah, in whatever. the entire exactly. jungle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's yeah. very strange. The, uh, what is, the short, what is, <clears throat> go ahead. Adam. The short story does an interesting thing with that, too, uh, in that the very first sort of trap, and I use that word loosely, is that Rainsford uh, makes a false path. Like, makes it mm. makes very intently walks hard in one direction, then retraces his steps backwards and goes off in another direction. And uh, Zaroff uh, mocks him for it immediately. Got it. When he runs into it, it says, you really think I'm that dumb? Ah, oh, I see. So they talk about his <clears> tracking you know, it skills. An, yeah. It brings up an interesting point, though, because um, he talks... The, well, we have the, the title of the movie, Most Dangerous Game. Yes. And it brings up the point that, like... He it implies that human beings would be the most dangerous animal to hunt. Yeah, which I but understand every... the idea is that cunningness would make. But the thing is, is 
n- the people he's getting randomly off a boat yeah. that he sunk are not going to be the most dangerous game. Yeah, besides It's going to be Ramsburg. the easiest. Yeah. And that's the weird thing about it is, like, the entire logical system of it breaks down so easily because, like, yes, people who ride on boats are super cunning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Deadly yeah. murderers. I mean, it, like, it, it's like no, they're like they're just yeah. guys on boats. Like, in, a, in a modern movie, the movie would spend some time showing one of these people who is uh, like about to go to this, like really become vicious and brutal or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, right. like th- if this movie were were made now, and if this movie were careful, it would, it would spend be time now. showing. Right, it would spend time showing the extent <laughs> that people will go to to try to protect themselves and why well, yeah. it turns really any human being with their brain because becomes the most dangerous game when they're being hunted. And I think you could mm. show that if this movie was careful. Uh, it, Modern adaptations do show yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. But they but they lose they lose what this is in showing that uh, to an extent. Or at least they have to modify it so much that it's unrecognizable. Predators is an adaptation of the most dangerous mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. But you want to yes. recognize it as such because it spends so much time uh, not being this. And obviously they replace Zaroff with... Predators, predators. And, uh, right? But we, we get into get the, the thing that, like, it's, it, but it has to be that way because anybody who takes like five minutes to watch this movie immediately stumbles upon like, well, my next door neighbor's not the most dangerous game, yeah. not right now. He's I'll, not. I'll readily admit that a tiger gonna kill more people than I could. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's I mean, unless you had like six months of like life forcing you to become the most dangerous game. Yes. Yes. The, the training. Need, yeah, well, it doesn't have to be training. It can be just hard knocks or something, but they need to show you becoming the most dangerous game. because, yes. we, And we get that with Rainsford a little bit. Like, oh, he's a famous hunter yeah, that, yeah. who tracks animals. And that that makes sense, but like, but still, Zaroff's logic is crazy. It's like, yeah, I'm going to... I mean, well, of course it's crazy. He's hunting yeah. people for sport. Um, but... <laughs> Like, beyond that, beyond the obvious craziness, it's still crazy because it's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to hunt this rich guy who fell off a boat or this right. sailor who fell off a boat. Well, maybe Both more importantly. Are be equally useless. Yeah. It, again, it really comes down to does this movie want to do something phil- philosophical or something sociological? And if it did want to do that, it would have to show that Rains, that uh, that Zaroff has a reason to do this. That he wants to stick it to like the the upper class, or that that he only finds the most talented people to prove he's better than them. Otherwise, he's just shooting innocent people in a barrel. Yeah, like he really I mean, is a murderer. So it really this this movie, you know, more than being like a philosophical piece or even like a, a thriller of any kind, it's a it's a horror movie. There's a crazy man who's going to kill this guy. You know what I mean? It's like a which is, horror. yeah, and it gets associated with horror a little bit that way. But like at the same time, like. Yeah, there's there's so many ways out of those logical problems. They just yeah. don't take any of them. And be, so they don't it's try. just yeah. yeah. So I wanted to talk about something before we get... I wanted to talk go all the way back to the beginning of the film. Yeah. And talk about the fact that this is the most obvious, like, dramatic irony slash foreshadowing that's ever been put to film. Yeah. That discussion on the boat is insane. <laughs> yes. It's a little much, yeah. How would that you feel, Rainsford, if you were the tiger? Yes. Yeah. I, well, I won't be the tiger. It's right. like the whole discussion really is this guys? hunter saying, "Oh, but I'm the hunter. I'll never be the hunted. That's never going to happen." Right. It's like, yeah. And like, meanwhile, like it's like, it's it's weird. It's like, was that necessary, guys? It's Did like one of those comedies. Film? It's like one of those comedies where someone says, "I'm never going to wear a dress," and then it cuts immediately <laughs> yeah. to that. Yeah. Like yeah. Three, three minutes later, or like yeah. it, the only, where, I mean, or like uh, it could be raining, and then it starts to rain. I don't right. know. It's yes. just, right. Yeah. So it's basically uh, young Frankenstein masquerading as uh, yes, yeah, the most yes. dangerous game. <laughs> They're old jokes, people. They're old. And jokes. They are. Although um, the the boat scenes did include probably one of my favorite things that kind of impressed me for a film made in you know the thirties, whatever was uh, was the subjective camera work of like showing the boat is rocking and the camera's like gently moving back and forth. Uh, yeah. it, that's a trick that's mm-hmm. used to show people being on a moving boat or something like that. Even now, it just you know. Uh, it, for films of that era, we're very used to cameras just sitting still and not doing anything, um, and and just that that gentle rocking made that boat scene really feel like a, a scene on a boat. It was it was kind yeah. of immersive. Um, it got my hopes yeah. a little higher than they deserve to be for the craftsmanship of this movie. Yeah. Well, and but then the you, weird thing and then is, you watch that... the boat sink. Yeah, and, yeah, and it wasn't. Oh, man. It, and then and you, you watch no a bunch of people best. throw uh, like deck furniture into the water from yeah. like. 
a stage about four <laughs> yeah. feet above it. That and was then, the like, best scene ever. I like the shark attack too. As as <laughs> as the boat sunk, these sharks are supposed to be pulling people right. under, but you can clearly see these people are just like kicking off and pushing themselves under. Like, oh no, I'm getting attacked by a shark. No. <laughs> oh, it got me. Push myself under the water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no. But no, I will never be able to. I will remember for the rest of my life deck furniture just being kind yeah. of yeah. gently <laughs> dropped into the water. It was just too much. As I was if like, it were what? an explosion. I know. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it, but like, it's the angles all weird and stuff. It's like, oh, so those stagehands are really good at throwing that deck furniture, huh? Right. Yes. Uh, which is weird because there are parts of the movie that show a, like at least as far as effects and camera work, show some craftsmanship. Oh yeah. Yeah, but then like there's things like that where it's like, oh well, we didn't budget the scene. Hey, you over there, throw the throw the deck furniture in. Yeah, yeah. like um, like because like I, like connected a little bit to me in my mind with the rocking of the boat was um that right at the very end when we start passing through the leaves, mm-hmm. that was kind of really interesting for a movie. I don't think we are actually passing through the leaves. I think obviously they're moving them over the camera, but they're still trying to give that illusion of camera movement that is not really common at this era yeah. at this time yeah yeah that's cool yeah i mean you can sort of see that like uh if, if this crew got like a budget and a, a plan uh they could make something really big and impressive with some really cool effects maybe something so king like kong. uh king kong yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly you know they, yeah. they came together and they did something really impressive yeah. But this is not really impressive. No, it's not. There's a reason. There's a reason these people are famous for King Kong and not and for not the adaptation most dangerous of the game. Yeah. Major, dangerous game. Uh, re- real quick, uh, to try to step back for a second, uh, talking about Zeroff's uh, motivations and, and his whole thing. Mm-hmm. I actually have the short story in front of me, and I wanted to, I wanted to read something real quick. Uh, this is this is Zaroff talking to Rainsford. Uh, Life is for the strong to be lived by the strong, and if it needs be taken by the strong. The weak of the world were put here to give the strong pleasure. I am strong. Why should I not use my gift? I wish to hunt. Why should I not? I hunt the scum of the earth. Sailors from tramp ships. Laskers, blacks, Chinese, whites, mongrels. A thoroughbred horse or hound is worth more than a score of them. There you go. That's exactly what this movie was missing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, It's it's missing that. Yeah. It's it's missing (laughs) that quote. Yeah. Yeah. To make it make sense, like to, yeah, yeah but even, logically but even then, together. Even then, I like I like that he, uh, while still insisting he's hunting the most dangerous game, recognizes that a single horse is right. more is worth right. more, more, not just yeah, to him, a but more dangerous game, yeah, but yeah, a more dangerous thing than than twenty of uh, twenty of any of the people he's hunted so far. Yeah, <laughs> but well, yes. nobody said Zarf was yeah. sane. He's actually in that paragraph. He's attacking. Uh, Attacking Rainsford for not being a social Darwinist like him, um, for not for believing that there's some sort of value in human life over animal life. Um, so I guess there are, there, that's that's his motivation tied up right there. Yeah, um, it, that's that's explicitly yeah. Nietzschean philosophy, right? Um, yes, exactly. If you have the will to be the stronger person, you deserve to be the stronger person, right? And that's exactly. Morality doesn't apply to you. That's what's missing from this movie. That's why this exactly. movie yeah. kind of feels like just a gothic horror story where a man traps people in his castle and slowly kills them. Uh, you know, and that's fine. I mean, you know, for the for the time period and for the genre, this movie's actually fine. I mean, there's no major huge problems in this movie. It just has all those little problems you expect from like kind of a, a not very brainy uh, horror adventure story. Uh, guys, I just discovered uh, something that makes me feel a little worse about this movie. Uh, I what? was wrong on the timeline. Uh, they were recording this at the same time as King Kong. That's why all the sets are identical because uh... they were there. Uh, and That's... they were shooting Kong during the daytime and, and this movie at night. So, uh, so, so Adam, we're in a, uh, the classic, um, what was it? Uh, Fra- uh, flesh for Frankenstein and blood for Dracula scenario where like, Hey, we still yeah. have some film guys. Let's make an adaptation of most dangerous game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that also we're... explains why this movie kind of feels like the leavings of another movie. <laughs> yes, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's a, well, we're there's a chance they had the model fun. boat because of the scene where they use a boat <laughs> to take Kong back to the mainland. And they decide, yes. well, before we just throw this boat out, let's just blow it let's up. Let's blow it up. Shipwreck. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We don't need this lawn yes. furniture anymore. Yeah, exactly. Just throw um, it overboard. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, so, speaking of that, though, that's what's most amazing is that, like, I don't remember King Kong very well. 
but the geography of this island is just bonkers. It's a little <laughs> yes. bonkers, yeah. There are there are like like five hundred foot cliffs next to swamps. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Where's all that why all that water sitting there? If there's a cliff right there. Yeah, next like to why it? hasn't it run down? Yeah, I go no. like it's kind it's of madness. Crazy. I agree. Well then there's just so much water, Pat. That's why uh, that it's actually see, the, starting to the go waterfall, up. It's sinking. The waterfall, it, it falls off the waterfall, and then it's a, it's an Escher thing, and, <laughs> and it falls it back. Right yeah, back. It falls up yeah. the waterfall as well. <laughs> yeah, it falls up the back. When, there's a there's an up waterfall on the other side of the island feeding the swamps. Yeah, no, it's and, yeah, right. Yeah, and then there's guys up, walking sideways through the third through the fourth dimension. <laughs> yes. um, no, it's just like. It, I every but it really caused me problems. Like be, looking at this island, I'm like because they would say like, "Oh, don't go in there. That's the swamp." And it's like, how did we get to the swamp from the cliff? Right, it's like yeah. three feet away. When, from the when cliff, did, yeah. yeah, how did that happen? Like we, we climbed a tree and got to the top of the cliff, and now we're in the swamp. And and there was a cave. I like the geography of the island was probable uh, problematic. I did not Which notice very... any of that while watching it, but in oh, retrospect, it tore me yeah. up. No, I, the entire time I'm watching, I was like, because, like, I don't know, maybe it's from playing too many video games or something, but, like, I'm right, automatically yeah. trying to create a map in my head of this, this world, and, I, and it does, the pieces don't fit together, mm-hmm. and that's it's a actually, problem for me. This reminds me very much of the conversation we had after watching the uh, uh, the remake of, the most recent remake of King Kong, uh, yes. where your, your entire problems with it was who built the stairs on the island. Yes! <laughs> Why are there stairs on the island? Thousands they, and thousands King of stairs Kong going up it? the mountain. Kong didn't build it. Obviously, yeah. there was a civilization on that island. Wasn't there and like so a native population that was worshiping Kong? I mean, I know we're getting it's, kind of far away from the. Well, not in yeah. the not in the remake. Not in not the remake. The remake? No, the remake no, is the, just like they just go to the island and like there's nobody there and yeah. In the I think, I think the there's, original, there's, there's some natives reference. outside of the island, um, but they're all scared to go there. So why the hell did they build so many stairs? Yeah. And they they live in thatch roof cottages. Uh, they're not stair builders. They're not they're not stair builders. <laughs> they're just dumb Cossacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just dumb Cossacks. <laughs> they can't put two words together except for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, so the uh, the ending of this is also uh, also very different from the from the short story uh, in a in a weird way. I think um, so. This one this one ends. Uh, he. He's shot, or we think he's shot, and he falls off the cliff, and they, they capture Eve and take her back. And Eve's Eve's a creation for the movie anyway, like I said. Um, Which is why she then, can be raped at will. And then Bob. Uh, Bob we shows up. We don't get up, to that point, but... Uh, just walks in the door. <laughs> and says hi, and then gets into a fight. And I think he suplexes a guy to death at one point. He certainly point. does. He absolutely does. Yes. This is the greatest scene of the movie. I also love how you're describing... How is that useful? I love how you're describing one of the most like like pivotal turning points in the scene is Bob walks in the door. <laughs> that's literally what he does. That's, that's exactly that's literally what, happens. what happens. You're not that you're, you're not exaggerating at all. How mundane it is. Yeah, yeah. So no, so uh, yeah, and then they fight, and then he he tries to run off, and Zaroff tries to shoot them as the boat escapes. And I love the framing of that. That is one no, of that's my awesome. That was pretty cool. The framing of him shooting out the window, um, and then he falls to the dogs. Uh, Whereas, whereas in the original short story, um, Bob, Bob, his name's not Bob in the movie, Rainsford, uh, or in the short story, Rainsford has, has jumped off a cliff into the water to escape the chasing dogs, uh, and, uh, is just assumed to be dead. Uh, so, Zaroff goes home and he spends the and, night. And, and, and furiously masturbates uh, because there is no female character. Yeah. <laughs> That's implied, but wrong? it's not. Um, he, he drinks a lot, so it's Im- <laughs> but he, uh, he, uh, he goes to bed and, and the description says a man, a ma- an unseen man steps out from behind the curtains of the window or something like that. And it's, it's Rainsford. Uh, well, who and, else would it be? Why did they write it? Yeah, that exactly. Way? Why, why, why say an unseen man? Unseen why, man, yeah. why not name it as Rainsford? Could be anybody. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah. um, all these damn sailors wandering my island. Yeah, yeah. blacks, so, uh, Chinese, whites, <laughs> whites. Uh, so he, uh, uh, Zaref jumps up and uh, and you know acts 
surprised he's still alive. Uh, How'd you get here? He says, I took the shortcut. I swam. It seemed easier than walking. Uh, which is an exact quote, but it's basically is what sure. he says. That's just but as I bad like as that. Bob like walks version. in the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is, you know, it's the Bob walks in the door of the short story. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, uh, he, uh, then, uh, they talk about getting into a duel. Uh, and, and whoever, the loser will be fed to the dogs and the winner will get to sleep in this bed. And then th- there's That's that line. Crazy. Zaroff says that. Zaroff says that. He says on guard. And then it says, uh, Rainsford thought he had never slept in a better bed. And that's the end of the short story. All right. That's kind of cool, though. Yeah, that, yeah, I'll take I that. Like I that. never, I never realized how ending. endings, endings like that have really influenced my writing. And then reading that made me realize how much, how much I've been influenced by the most dangerous game in, in really well, there, But ways. there's a lot of writing like that out there. I, I can't <laughs> yeah. think of a specific example, but yeah, that you see that a lot. So yeah. Yeah, I guess that was a, sort of actually skip, a skip the work. action. Skip the action to the uh, protagonist responding to it. In, in in fact, this movie skips the protagonist responding to things for the yes, sake of the action. In, in favor of the action, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to point out though that we, thanks to the way they set it up, we did get classic gun in the air struggle. Yes, yes. which I always appreciate when a movie gets me. <laughs> Especially the further ba- further back in time we go, the more I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, we also I, I love it. It's like wow. It's like every action movie I've ever seen it has this like struggle yeah. for the gun. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the air and it's going off and shooting random things right. in the room. And I always worry that like when that happens, I always worry that like Faye Ray's character is going to come around the corner with a gunshot in her it's belly. Sh- I always think been. that's going to happen. How it should have been. It should have. It should have gone that way. Right, but knowing should, how like simple this movie is, there was no way it was going to like have Rainsford lose everything that he was fighting for uh, for just so that he could win i mean that that would have been cool but not this movie no yeah although yeah there's a lot this movie did there's have a... one of my favorite classic film tropes which is a dramatic zoom with a crazy uh musical sting uh <laughs> at the at the beginning when we don't know we i mean obviously we know how evil this guy is you can see it on his face yeah. um but but we kind of story-wise don't know how evil he is and fey ray's character looks at him and there's this like huge like oh, what looks like a crane shot down onto his face <sighs> with the music going like really dramatic <laughs> it's yes. really good yes it's like so overblown and so huge and there's no resolution to it it's just for the sake of having that moment it's so good <laughs> because you have to yeah well we've got yeah. this crane for the king kong so we might as well use it <laughs> yeah crane down in on one man's face which you know in retrospect is maybe pretty innovative for a movie like this to use a crane to accomplish like uh like an a character moment i like to imagine to that they just moment. used one of the cossacks or cossacks and made him jump off a <laughs> Ladder and just jump like, down. <laughs> no, uh, you but, jump off this ladder with yeah. the camera. What are you gonna Listen. do? You're dumb and a Cossack. Just do it. <laughs> I'm not actually a Cossack, you know. I'm just an actor. I'm from Anaheim. <laughs> Slaps him. Uh-huh. You're a Cossack. God damn it. Why are you He's talking? He's exclusively method acting in this movie. Yeah. Yes. The, the Nobody the comes out alive. Day, that dumb Cossack. <laughs> <laughs> he goes home to his wife and says, uh, "Good work today." She's like, you're supposed to be dumb. Don't talk to me. <laughs> uh, I love how fake that guy's beard looks, yeah, too. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. Terrible beard. Oh, well, yeah. This movie could have been a lot better if it took a few more hints from the short story, I think. Yeah, yeah if it had actually followed its source material. Yeah. Like so yeah. many adaptations, it suffers from the fact that it doesn't actually respect its source material. Right. Yeah. I yeah. kind of think maybe they never read it. <laughs> there's a chance most of them hadn't. Yeah. There's I, a chance. I think most there's of them a real hadn't. possibility that it just because it's in the cultural consciousness, they were like, you know what we should do? We should make the most dangerous game. Have you read it? No. Have you? No. We'll fake it. That's it's fine. about hunting people, right? Yeah, he says like, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. I mean, no uh, it, yeah. it's worth it's noting nice. that the writers and directors of uh, Children of Men never read the original story, and that's yeah. one of my favorites. So, the, the short well, it's not a necessity, but it's helpful if somebody on the staff has read it. Right, can be like, um, if you're, sir, if you're willing to come aliens? up with right, exactly. Well, if you're willing to come up with like motivations for your characters and make sense out of the whole thing, like Children of Men does, you don't necessarily need to slavishly follow. Your your source material, but this 
Mm-hmm. This thing didn't bother to fill in the gaps it was ignoring from the source material. Which is why it's only an hour long. Right. Which is, yes. when I saw that, I was like, this is not going to end well, guys. <laughs> no. Like, no. It was like an <laughs> hour long to tell the entire story. Yeah. Like, and man, it felt they, like it to you. You rushed and they still through manage, it. they still managed to add filler. There's a little I bit. know, still, right? There's a little bit of yeah. filler, yeah. Yeah. Like, well, we only I mean, got whole, 48 minutes the of content Eve, here. The whole, the whole Martin, you know, Eve's drunk brother. Everything, everything is... Well, it's and, not and, and the whole and the yeah no it's but it doesn't yeah. even work it doesn't even work as shorthand for something that is in the well original. but just, but it does work in sort of a movie logic way of like yeah. you have to in other yeah. words this movie like we we were chatting a little bit before we started recording about the movie Dread uh, which yeah. which <laughs> Pat you described as being just a, an efficient you know pretty pretty good action movie that was fun to watch and I think this is probably the dread of its time right based off of something that maybe had a little more well, political nuance Dread was much better I understand that I understand <laughs> this that. Was, what I'm getting well, yeah, at is. This is what I'm getting is this movie really is just like a brainless action movie that covers yeah. all of its normal action movie bases, right? Establish the evil yeah. of the antagonist by having the brother disappear, give the the character a motivation to fight back by having him be a hunter, and then get into your action set pieces, which include like cliffs and dogs and all this stuff. I mean, it's you know yeah. cool map painting. Exactly, you know, it's it's uh, yeah. of the day. Yeah. It's probably a perfectly good action movie to us. It looks. Lazy, uh, but uh, but of the day, it was probably a perfectly serviceable action movie. Yeah, and I can kind of agree that I was wondering actually when I was watching, kind of on that t- on that line of thinking, I was like, you know, I don't remember the short story. I know I read it, but I don't remember it. Um, is it pulpy? Would you describe it as pulp? Good question, Adam. Oh, it's not. I mean, it was written in twenty four. It's it's not because well, this yeah. is pulp. Yeah, yeah. It's, the it's, movie is I mean, pulp, utter pulp. Mm-hmm. The plot is Which the is same. Weird. So, you know, you have you have that pulp element of just, you know... Weird uh, tales. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's, it's Which, by the way, I love thing. pulp, but not this movie. Not so much. Yeah, yeah. It's just movie, very movie dated. Pulp, That's the movie problem. Movie pulp and literature pulp always always play a little different in my mind, yeah. right. too. Well, you so. can... you can. Yeah, I don't know if there's a lot of trans... Uh, like, carryover, like, good carryover between the two. Like, yeah. you've yeah. got your tropes of, like, TV... Or movie pulp, and you've got your tropes of... Uh, like literary pulp, and I don't know that they how well they mesh together or not. Well, literary right, pulp, yeah. I think, uh, has uh, the the distance between literary pulp and sort of literature writing nowadays that that takes from it is a lot shorter than the distance between film pulp and how pulp works on film nowadays, right? Like, yeah. it yeah. just mm-hmm. looks so arrestingly different. There's not really, like, Quentin Tarantino is the only one who's doing sort of nostalgia pulp. Otherwise, everybody's just moved so far away from it. Whereas in literature, there's a lot of that sort of nostalgic uh, pulp language. Uh, you know, the, the um, uh, whatever, just like the noir kind of pulpy detective stories are, are still very much a part of the DNA of literature. Um, it, much more obviously than they are a part of the DNA of, of modern, you know, action. Yeah, you movies. don't see a lot of sapia tone, like, yeah. fan spinning in a, in a like under the lighting of a slat uh exactly blinds in a room unless they're doing it on purpose exactly whereas with with literature you see a lot of this like these tropes revisit literature this the way that they don't really in film so that's probably why at least would be my guess why uh was uh, why film pulp uh is not really as obvious nowadays as literature pulp is Mm -hmm. so what we really need to understand is that we need quentin tarantino to 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 do this that would not I, the most dangerous game, the nineteen thirty whatever God, version oh of God. those dangerous. What game. a good idea! <laughs> I would love to watch Quentin Tarantino doing like a nineteen thirties style uh, movie. I would, I would like get away from that sixties stuff he loves to do and get back to the thirties. I would love to see what he would do with something like this. I think it that would, would be hilarious. It would be awesome. That would, that would make a Quentin Tarantino movie that I would actually enjoy. Me too. Watching. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I would get excited about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've run our course here. Unless anyone. Wow, has, this has one's really there. short, Adam. Hey, listen. Our last two weeks were only a half hour long. So were they really? Mm-hmm. Should one of us start playing a oh, musical no, no. instrument for the last five <laughs> minutes of the? Got a recorder. I could whip out. Listen, play some hot recorder. For you guys. Awesome. Yeah. To be well, to be fair, this is a pretty short movie. So it's, yeah, <laughs> it I guess getting getting response. forty minutes out of a out of yeah. a. Hour long movie is pretty good, yeah. I guess. Yeah. All right, um, we'll, we'll call it quits then. 
Yeah, next time we'll be talking about uh, the original Insomnia, Eric's cold... Uh, it's it's Norwegian, I can't say it. <laughs> Shulver, Shulver. So wait a minute, wait a Shulver. minute. Shulver. You guys uh, watched the Norwegian version. Yeah. Did you not Damn watch it, the Damn it, I knew that version? was going to happen. <laughs> it's okay. So it's is okay. Al Pacino be... in yours? No, no. Um, oh, man. Interestingly enough, though, uh, uh, Robin Williams is. Um, you, you should, know, I've never seen the. You should hear Robin I, Williams I kind of, in the original. Is Norwegian. Robin Williams really in the remake? <laughs> yes, he really what is. What part in the does he play? Uh, he we'll plays, talk about uh, it next next time. Yeah. But yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay, anyway. sorry. So 1997, the original uh, thriller, obviously remade uh, a few years later by uh, by the Americans to uh, a different sort of effect. But we'll get into that too. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Stephen Goldmeyer, for joining us. And uh, you'll be joining us on the next episode, too. That's right. So Thanks. We'll see you Thanks then. Thanks for having yep, me. See you then. All right. Thank you for coming. to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.com.